The female's name was Faye Dallum. She was a sergeant at the academy and was mostly in charge of squad training. Those of you who are injured go to the doctor's office to be treated immediately, while the rest of you head to the dorms and stay inside until you are called out again. Do you understand? Faye said. After successfully attaching Vorden's arm back to his body, Haley, the school doctor, had gone up to check on Quinn. What is this? For this much blood, the wound should be a lot bigger. Quinn started to laugh nervously. <laughs> yeah, my friend has a healing ability and managed to heal me a bit before I got here. Oh, another healer, Haley said surprised. Well, if you get the chance, send them down here. Their ability is quite good, and it looks like they have done a splendid job. I could do it with help, and I would love to have a student of my own. Sure, Quinn replied. Meanwhile, inside one of the integration rooms, a large muscular man with forearms the size of thighs was sitting opposite the second-year student Momo, and on his shoulder the man had the rank of general. His name was Duke King, and he was head of the second-year students. Of all the people it had to be Faye to stop us, Momo complained, I did as you asked, and now I might pay for it. Will you relax? Nothing will come of this, I promise you that, Duke replied. You're only students, and these types of things happen, and I'll vouch for you. Really? So this won't all fall back on me then? Momo asked. Of course, as long as no one finds out about our little secret, Duke said with a smile. The next day had arrived, and it was a weekend for the students. Just like any other school, students did not have to attend classes and were free to do as they wished around the city. Although the curfew still existed, they had to be back in their dorm rooms before 10 in the evening, and they were not allowed to leave the city. However, for the leaders at the school, their day was not as relaxing as the students, for a meeting had been called. Inside the academy on the top floor, the leaders of the academy had gathered in a fairly large meeting hall. Faye was the first to stand and speak. We are here today to conduct the meeting on what to do with the second-year students, who were involved in the case involving primarily the first-year student known as Vorden Blade and the students who are part of Dell's class and Leo's Beast Weapons class. Faye then pressed a little button on a controller she held in her hand. In front of the generals and the other sergeants, a holographic report was being displayed to them. I believe you have all read the reports, but this is here just for your reference. I would like to ask your opinion on how these students should be punished, General Duke. Punished? Duke said. I see no reason for these students to be punished. If you look at the report, it seems like Vorden was the first to attack the others. They were simply retaliating. These types of things happen all the time. I urge the rest of the sergeant to take extra precaution, said Faye. It was only recently that we had the death of a student in our school. Unlike Brandon, Vorden is an original. If his family was to get involved in it, would not be good for the academy. How is the preparation for the portal outing coming along for the first-year students? Leo asked. Yes, everything has been all set up, Nathan said. A green portal has been selected for the students to go through, and the base has made preparations for their arrival. It should all go smoothly next week. Do you know what planet the expedition will take place on? Leo asked. Then I will be able to better prepare my students. It's best to ask your students to pack some sun cream and their sunglasses, as they will be arriving on the planet Kaladi, Nathan replied. Planet Kaladi, a planet that was mostly covered in desert and contained low-tier beasts, Kaladi contained a 72-hour cycle. It was brilliant for those that loved the sunlight and heat. The three of them then proceeded to head into town. They went ahead and grabbed some food, watched a movie, and had a good laugh, but as they were outside... Peter spotted a group of high-level first-years he had met before. As Peter had made eye contact with the group, they had signaled to him they wanted to talk. "'Hey, guys, I just remembered that I promised to meet up with a few people from school tonight,' said Peter. "'It was great hanging out with you guys, but I'll, I'll see you when you get back to the dorm.' Vorden looked at Quinn, realizing that they both thought Peter's words sounded suspicious. No matter what, Peter didn't want an incident like last time to happen." He would deal with the problems himself. Took you long enough. The student standing in front of the group had a scar on his chin, and his name was Earl. What the hell do you think you were doing calling the teacher the other day? Earl said. Now Momo and the others are giving us a hard time for relying on you. Now we have another job for you, Peter, and you better do it right this time, you understand? Just not if you agree. Peter then shook his head. He had already decided that no matter what, he would never betray Vorden or Quinn again. What, are you saying no? Do your thing, Jerry. 
Then Jerry placed his hand on top of Peter's, and slowly a warm feeling was felt, and the bones in Peter's fingers were starting to take shape. They reformed to what they once were, and he had been healed. Then a big smile on Earl's face could be seen. He grabbed Peter's fingers again and repeated the process again and again. Eventually, after an hour had passed of breaking, hurting and rehealing Peter, Peter's mind had given in. Without him realizing it, he no longer wanted to feel the pain and nodded, agreeing to their request. Good, Earl said. Now this time, you better do it right and be sure not to involve anyone. Hi, Quinn here. Thirsty for more action? Jump the queue and unleash all episodes. Click on the link here and install the Pocket FM app. Sink your teeth into the next episode of our fantastic journey, only on the Pocket FM universe.